Hi everyone. Today we're talking about the difference between two types, INTP and ENTP. Basically because I've noticed a lot of people asking questions about how to tell these two types apart and what are the things that one can look at in order to have more clarity with respect to whether someone is an ENTP or someone is an INTP. So all about that in the next few minutes. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Before I start, I'd like to remind you guys that I offer coaching sessions that have a focus on helping you understand yourself, engaging in a process of self-discovery, self-awareness, self-transformation, using a variety of tools. We look at things such as your MBTI type, Enneagram type, attachment styles, communication styles, and so on and so forth by engaging in a life coaching or career coaching process for that matter. In the description below, you can find a link to my website. It will redirect you to a page where you can learn more about the kinds of topics that I cover, what other clients say, um, and any other administrative related questions you might have. Also, if you have any additional questions, feel free to message me on Instagram or Facebook, and I'm really, really happy to, to talk to you about it. So anyway, getting back to INTP versus ENTP. Let's dig a little deeper into that. So, we have two types that share quite a lot of things, right? They have three letters in common. They're both intuitive, they're both thinkers, they're both perceivers. We also have types that have very similar cognitive functions because for both ENTP and INTP, we have high extroverted intuition and high introverted thinking. And we also have extroverted feeling and introverted sensing in their ego, in their first four functions. Um, they also have the same temperament, right? They're rationals and T-types if, if we look at David Kurz's perspective. So I can understand why a lot of people might be confused with this. Also, INTPs and ENTPs can both struggle with understanding the extroversion-introversion dimension. A lot of ENTPs might think they're introverts and they might actually be introverts in a social way because, you know, social and cognitive extroversion and introversion are not the same thing. So you could be an ENTP who has a lower focus on socializing, going out with people, interacting with a lot of people, even maybe an ENTP with a little bit of social anxiety. That's very possible. And in that case, you might think you're an INTP for that reason. However, as I was mentioning in, in other previous videos, it's extremely important to look at the cognitive preferences and the cognitive archetypes as well, as well as the interaction style. So let's start with the archetypes, with the cognitive functions. Even though ENTPs and INTPs lead with extroverted intuition and introverted thinking, they do it in a different way. So for ENTPs, they have extroverted intuition as a hero function, whereas INTPs have extroverted intuition as a parent or auxiliary function. Okay, if we look a little bit at how this kind of, you know, flows from, from the original point, ENTPs tend to be much more expansive with their extroverted intuition. They tend to allow the, world's, the world of ideas and possibilities and what ifs to kind of take control of everything else, to kind of be the one that is shaping their thought process. Whereas INTPs tend to use extroverted intuition in a more responsible way. I kind of like to say it from that perspective. Our parent function or auxiliary function often tends to be a little maybe healthier compared to the hero function and it tends to allow us to maybe look at things from a bit of a more realistic perspective. I'm careful with the word realistic because I know it can also be interpreted in a different way, kind of like from a sensing concrete perspective. But what I'm saying here is that INTPs will be a bit more realistic than ENTPs. And that's because intuition is not completely dominant. It's not the one that is taking control. And it's more balanced with sensing, with introverted sensing, that is basically their third function. We see a slightly more balanced perspective between idealism and realism. ENTPs, because they focus more on extroverted intuition, of course, this means 
they are less likely to engage with their introverted sensing and they have more difficulties with introverted sensing. So they tend to be more focused on ideas and possibilities than INTPs are. INTPs are too, but they are slightly more realistic in doing that. So that's kind of like one perspective that we might want to look at when looking at or comparing these two types. Um, something similar happens with introverted thinking. Uh, in this case, we have INTPs who have introverted thinking as a hero or dominant function and ENTPs who have introverted thinking as a parent or auxiliary function. So a similar pattern can be kind of taken and integrated here as well because um, ENTPs in this case are the ones who use introverted thinking in a more responsible way. They don't exaggerate with the usage of introverted thinking as compared to INTPs who of course lead with this process, which means they are much more likely to exaggerate the usage of this function. While both types can be very good at arguing, coming up with logical flaws and noticing this kind of flaws in other people's argumentation, other people's points of view, um, ENTPs will kind of balance it out with extroverted feeling because extroverted feeling is their child or tertiary function. So they have a, a more balanced approach between the two, which means that maybe in a conversation you will notice the ENTP showing a bit more empathy. Um, the ENTP might also be a bit more emotionally expressive and a bit more likely to um, try to make sure that their um, logical point of view is not completely overriding the emotional content, the atmosphere in the conversation, how the other person is feeling and so on and so forth. Whereas INTPs with inferior extroverted feeling and hero introverted thinking they are much more likely to um, disregard the emotional component, especially if they get involved into a conversation where they're really focused on their arguments, on what their logic is telling them. They might completely demolish you with their logic and might completely jump over what the social atmosphere might tell them. It's not that they don't notice it or they don't care about it. It's just that the introverted thinking hero is kind of pressing them to engage with that. So. Um, again, they will be slightly less expressive um, in an emotional way, especially when they're not very comfortable with you. Okay, uh, now if we look at the inferior function, I mentioned a little bit about that, but I'd like to compare introverted sensing inferior, which is the case for ENTPs, and extroverted feeling inferior, which is the case for INTPs. Um, INTPs tend to have a, a much stronger, let's say, issue or difficulty with expectations that come from other people. And they might burden themselves with what they think they should do for the people they love without checking that with others. And they might feel this immense pressure on themselves, which can really cause them to feel a lot of stress and anxiety because they really want to make the people they love happy. But oftentimes they might struggle to, to come up with, okay, how do I do that? What are the things that I can do for the people that I love to keep them happy? I feel pressure to do it, but I'm not sure how. ENTPs can sometimes struggle with this, but generally they will find it a bit easier to find ways to make others happy, to keep them in a good mood, to entertain them and so on and so forth. However, ENTPs will struggle more with introverted sensing. And this is something that it's not always the case, but I noticed it quite a lot in a lot of ENTPs that they tend to have quite a strong fear that there might be something wrong with their bodies, that maybe they're sick, maybe something is going on in their bodies that they cannot tell. So I feel like ENTPs are a bit more likely to be hypochondriacs than INTPs. Okay. Um, another thing, the child function. We have extroverted feeling as a child function in ENTPs and what is particular about this is that ENTPs will naturally want to make people happy in a very childish, cute way, in a, maybe even naive way. Whereas INTPs, they feel the pressure to make the people they love happy but they don't engage so much with that behavior. They might feel the anxiety deep inside of them, but behaviorally they might block it. Whereas ENTPs will show much more of this childish tendency to want to share, want to 
make people happy, want to be expressive, want to connect and relate. And they will be very hurt if the other person does not reciprocate. Also, a, a tendency that extroverted feeling as a child function has is to overshare or undershare, which both ENTPs and ESTPs do quite a lot. And I think it's quite particular that we notice this. Whereas in INTPs, I'm not saying that it can't happen, but it's slightly less likely to happen um, as a pattern if we look at it over time. Um, yeah, and then of course we have the interaction style, which is an important component that should be mentioned here as well. And basically what this shows us is that ENTPs are starter types or get things going types, whereas INTPs are behind the scenes types. Uh, something particular about this is that ENTPs tend to be much more comfortable working in a group context where they kind of mobilize other people to join them in a new project, in some you know, new thing that they want to do. They come up with all of these ideas and they want people to join. They want people to kind of team up with them and create things. They're kind of this um, like pressure that you put somewhere, but a good kind of pressure that reverberates and then inspires other people to join and do things together with them. On the other hand, INTPs will definitely prefer working alone much more. They're much more likely to just want to be themselves, want to come up with ideas and solutions to problems themselves, trying them out, testing them out and doing it more in a, in a reclusive state. Um, also, I find INTPs, due to their introversion, to be more observant, slightly more likely to want to listen before responding, whereas ENTPs tend to throw off ideas in conversation more. I'm not saying that ENTPs cannot learn to listen, some of them are very good at it, but generally ENTPs will bring out more ideas, might interrupt a little bit more, and might um, start conversations more frequently than INTPs, who are more likely, because of their introversion, to respond, to be the ones that uh, give a feedback after they have listened and processed things. Yeah, so um, these are my thoughts on some of the most, let's say, important differences between ENTPs and INTPs. We have looked at different cognitive functions and how they look a little bit different when they are um, in different archetypes or different positions. And we have also looked at interaction styles. So um, is there anything else that you kind of, you know, notice as a difference between these two types? If you have, I'm really happy to talk to you about it. So please feel free to share your thoughts below. Again, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks a lot for being with me and see you next time.